NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network, presented by Wheelan Engineering and also brought to you by Hercules Tire. The ARCA West Series, which Kyle and I have now finally figured out how to call the ARCA West Series, uh, was the Canaan West Series just a few short years ago, where they consistently had schedules that were around 15 to 17 races. But coming with the merger of the ARCA Series, uh, that schedule has slowly been cut down, which this year now consists of nine races. They kicked their season off uh, what seems like forever ago in March at Phoenix Raceway, where Ty Gibbs captured that victory. They were back in action, not but a shoe for short few weeks ago at the Sonoma Raceway Park in early June, where it was a Chase Briscoe that captured the victory. And finally, they will be on their third race of nine for the 2021 season in just a few short weeks in July for the Napa Auto Parts 150. Uh, where a driver that we've talked about a little bit last week, Amber Slagle, is making her debut. And right now, Kyle, uh, the West Series, with everyone spread out, I feel like we should be halfway through the schedule, but we're only coming up on race three. And yet it's still a third of the way through the schedule, uh, race three in a couple of weeks. And you mentioned uh, with the ARCA merger with NASCAR a couple of seasons ago uh, and, and with budget in mind for a lot of these smaller teams, they found it best to, to kind of trim the schedule and, and run just a handful of races, you know, seven, nine races. And we we're supposed to see this type of schedule last year and then the pandemic hit and it was much shorter than, than even uh, the ARCA folks had hopes originally. So um, looking forward to race number three next week and, and Amber being a great addition to that race at the Irwindale Speedway in California. And hopefully, uh, I know she's got a lot of responsibility here on the East Coast, but maybe can lead to, to her running some more races as we get toward the fall. Yeah, we're going to dial her up up in here in just a little bit to uh, talk to her here on the guest line. Uh, but we talk about the points also. And this with this merger, we've had a couple combined events. We see it with the ARCA E-Series as well. Uh, it races such as Dover. We see it out here on the West Coast with Phoenix. And then, of course, Sonoma, always pairing up with the Cup Weekend. We see a lot of folks double dip, including the winner of Chase Briscoe. So up until this Irwindale race, the West Series, I wouldn't even really can say has had a lone West Series race because you had so many different entrants for Sonoma and of course uh, Ty Gibbs and all of the Arkham Menard Series drivers came out for the doubleheader of uh, uh, Phoenix. So you look at our points, Kyle. Todd Souza currently leaves over Paul Petronel Pet Petrincelli Jr. and Cole Moore. Those three, all within three points of each other, and then you've got Dean Thompson. None of them have a win. Only one of them each has one top five. <laughs> So they're finally getting an opportunity, and I think they all have Irwindale Speedway circled as, okay, this is the first race of a true ARCA West points race. It's about being consistent in those first couple of races, just, just trying to be, I guess, the, you know, the best of the West series. I just made that up on the <laughs> but fly. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, you had Ty Gibbs there in Phoenix, and you had Chase Briscoe in Sonoma. And uh, because, like you mentioned, it's a standalone race at Irwindale, we won't have many, if any, outsiders come in. So we'll, we'll start to see who the true players are going to be for the Arkham Menards West Championship here in a couple of weeks' time. And right now, you know, Todd Souza has a bit of a leg up on everybody else as the current point leader. Yeah, and the Arca East also raced this past weekend at Southern National Motorsports Park for their last standalone race of the season. And we'll have the results for that a little bit later on in the show. But for now, we're going to take a quick break and dial up Amber Slagle to talk a little bit of Arca West Racing. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Whelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 1950. Wide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires. Right on our strength. 
Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. And just a reminder, it is Ally Week here on the Motor Racing Network as we get ready to go racing this up and coming weekend at Nashville Super Speedway. But someone who's preparing to go racing herself in just a few weeks is Amber Slagle. She joins us here now on the guest line, getting ready to make her debut in the ARCA West. First off, Amber, I know you're working away at the shop here in Mooresville. Uh, so thanks for taking a little bit of a break to join us here. Yeah. Of course. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It was super cool to see your announcement. Of course, uh, your name has been in the headlines over the last little while, more or less of the crew chief role you play for Parker Retzlaff. We'll get into that a little bit later, but you're getting a chance to get back behind the wheel and not only that, but making your debut at Irwindale Speedway in a short few weeks uh, in the ARCA West Series. How did this partnership come together with, you know, David Mayhew, who I believe still owns that 17 car uh, and ultimately putting this on the racetrack? Yes, it's actually uh, Steve McGowan who owns the 17 car. David Mayhew just drove it for him for the longest time, but uh, now he's raising kids and they race and he's kind of uh, taken that role and yeah, wants to race with his kids. So we've had Zane in the car a couple of times at Phoenix and Sonoma and uh, Steve just saw how hard I've been working the past few years and on his team and as a crew chief now for Parker and kind of came to Bruce Cook and said, um, why don't we give her a shot? You know, you talk about how good she is in your late models. And and I don't come from money, so that's been a hard thing. And that's why I work in the industry now. And for Steve, just to give me the shot, it, I am just so truly blessed because it's something that you, you don't really expect to happen anymore. And just to have somebody see how hard I've worked and how passionate I am for the sport and, and how much I care about it, it's it's an honor. And I hope to go make the best out of this weekend because you never know when you're going to get another shot like this again. Um, I'm so super excited and I know we're going to have fun. That race coming up in just uh, two weeks time, a little over two weeks, July 4th weekend at the Irwindale Speedway. You mentioned uh, in your pre-race press release, you've never seen the place before. So how do you prepare? Um, So I've been doing a lot of watching videos and, just talking to people that have raced there and have had a lot of success there, taking notes and trying to just gain as much knowledge from other people that have been there as I can. And um, I think the videos have helped me a lot. I, I'm definitely a visual learner. So I take a lot of notes off that. And I've always done well going to new tracks, um, not seeing places. I, I think I learn quickly at new places. Um, I know it'll be my first time in an ARCA car, and I think that that's going to be another step to kind of learning heavier car and more horsepower compared to a late model. But um, I think we're going to do well. I've been studying, and I'm trying to make the best out of this opportunity and make sure that I have everything I need to know to have a successful run for my team for this shot that I'm getting. Well, I will say as a um, retired driver, I am very excited for you to get to go to Irwindale Speedway. That always ranks up at the top of favorite places that I've had the opportunity to run, both in a late model and an ARCA car. Um, And it is just a phenomenal facility in a whole. I I have no doubt that you will have a blast. But you talked about how you've gotten this opportunity. Of course, Mm -hmm. the crew chief on Parker Retzlaff, uh, which is so cool to see a female on top of the box in the ARCA series. Uh, How much do you think your knowledge, though, maybe gives you an upper hand going into your debut? Because we hate to say it, but anymore, a lot of the kids that are entering this sport and becoming drivers and moving up don't have the mechanical knowledge, the wherewithal to be able to call the shots they want on adjustments. You can not only drive the race car and feel the adjustments, but then tell your crew chief what kind of crew chiefing role (laughs) are you going to have in your own debut? Yeah, I think... Uh, it's definitely helped me a lot becoming a crew chief and kind of learning that whole side of things. Uh, I've been working as a mechanic for four years now, and it's helped me grow so much as a driver, knowing kind of what to ask for, what I'm feeling out of the car. And I really understand the changes now that they're giving me. And I can say, you know, I think maybe we need to go more with that change or take that back. And how about we try this? At the same time, I kind of try to ask for things. And I have to remember I'm the driver now and not the crew chief. So to let my crew chief kind of take that role and just tell them what I need and just drive instead of saying, how about we try this change? And um, But I think that it has definitely helped grow my knowledge. I, I understand and I'm the one that works on the car here in the shop and now I get to go drive it. 
So that's more exciting for me too, because I know everything that's going on around the car and what to expect when I'm getting in that car. You said you've been a mechanic the last couple of years, been mm -hmm. a crew chief here this year for, for a good chunk of the East schedule, I believe top five run just a couple of nights ago yes. um, at Southern National. Is it what you expected going in now that you're in that role with the headset on calling the shot? No, honestly, no, I did not think so. I, I moved down here all by myself almost four years ago away from my whole family. And I just told them, you know, this is what I'm going to do. If, if I can't be a driver full time anymore because the money's just not there. I'm so passionate about this sport and I still want to be involved in it every day, whether it's being a driver or a mechanic. And I still want my name to be known in this sport. And that's kind of what I did. Um, so, yeah, it's just. I, it's different. I I never expected it. And I got this opportunity this year and Bruce came to me and asked if I wanted to do it. And he felt I was ready to keep growing more and learn that side of it. And I told him, yeah, of course. And he still helps me through it. There's still some things I need to learn as always. I'm still young, but uh, we've run really well. And I've been really impressed with Parker this year. I think we've had a lot of success and a win is definitely coming for him. And it's going to be exciting with me on top of the box. So, man, a, a girl after my own soul here. We just we just can't <laughs> seem to get away from the sport. We still want to stick around and yes. do, as I say, race car things with our race car friends at the racetrack. Uh, what is that relationship like with Parker? Of course, uh, you're one of the younger crew chiefs uh, in the series. We often see folks that have been crew chiefs up at higher levels that have stepped down maybe even to the ARCA series because they want more of a lax schedule where this is a building stone for you. Uh, so what's that communication, that trust been like between you and Parker? Yeah, I think he's honestly like a little brother to me. I think he's been with us since I started here and we've, uh, we've grown a lot together and I've learned kind of how he is as a driver before I took the crew chief position with him. And uh, he's around the shop with us and hangs out with us on the weekends and um, he's kind of grown with me I think as his bigger sister and I've helped him grow as a driver kind of driver coached him to where he's at now um, and it's it's fun I think we have a closer relationship probably which helps him a lot he, he feels he can ask what he needs from me and he's not afraid to ask me um, and he asked me for advice and kind of how I feel what he needs to help him become better so I think that's something that's really good. And he, he's grown a lot since he's been with us. So I'm excited to see what the rest of the year has for him. And, and now me becoming a driver, I think it's going to be exciting for the rest of the year. Becoming a driver, but you've, you have some <laughs> past experience in the driver's well, yeah. seat before. For those that don't know, <laughs> you know, kind of bring us up to speed and some of your late model background down there in the Southeast. Yeah, I've run racing uh, late model stocks and limited late models for Bruce Cook. Just when we can, we have off weekends. We're not arc and truck racing. And that's kind of kept me in the seat. And it was kind of just something that I've been doing just to keep racing. I, I can't let it go. I still want to be a driver, whether it's once a year or every weekend. That's just, it's something I'm still so passionate about. And I don't want to give up just yet. So now I'm having this opportunity. It's just huge. Um, but we've been running late models kind of all over down the south trying to go as many different tracks as we can to get me experience and we've had a lot of success i've only raced once this year so far back in april at orange county uh, we finished fifth so we've we've had a good start to the year and i hope we can keep that going now irwindale and the arca car and we're looking forward to watching it as well again irwindale such a fun event. Uh, well, Amber, we know you're busy. We'll let you get back to work at the race shop. Uh, again, congratulations on this opportunity. We're looking forward to continuing to watch you uh, in two weeks and also on top of the box with Parker Ressoff. And hey, hopefully some more opportunities that come out of this as well. Yes, thank you. Hope to hear from you guys soon. Again, guys, that is Amber Slagle, crew chief for Parker Retzloff in the ARCA East, but also making her debut at Irwindale Speedway in the ARCA West Series in just a few weeks. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we've got your Wheel and Engineering Modified Spotlight. 
Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Whelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 19. 52. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top 9 miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Get back to NASCAR roots by driving headfirst into the new home of grassroots racing. Flow Racing keeps the original NASCAR tradition of dirt track racing roaring with more than 1,300 live and on-demand oval events from across the U.S. Learn how the next generation of NASCAR drivers is prospected in sprint car racing. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash go MRN. That's floracing.com forward slash go MRN. Back here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, time now for another Wheel and Engineering Modified Driver Spotlight. And once again, we're back up here in the Northeast, a driver that participates in tracks like the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park and his home track, the New London Waterford Speed Bowl, where his family has had so much success over the years. Joey Gata joins us. Joey, first off, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. A, uh, you picked up a win earlier at the track this year, current point leader at Waterford. We'll talk about 2021 in a moment, but uh, your family, obviously a, a long and storied history at the, the New London Waterford Speed Bowl. You're a third generation driver. Uh, Dennis, your dad, picked up seven championships at the yeah. legendary track uh, and countless wins. Uh, one of the all time win leaders at the racetrack. Uh, so we'll start at the beginning. When did you become interested in in motorsports and when did you realize this is something I want to do? Um. I mean, right from when I was a little kid, I can remember loving racing. So, uh, I don't know. I, I got into it, um, probably started paying attention to my dad racing, you know, re- really understanding it around five years old, I'm going to say. And, uh, that was, that was back when he was driving for Harry Wyant and, and really doing very well. Um, so it was really easy to get into and, and really be excited about it. Um, and I didn't, uh, I didn't really start racing until I was like eight years old. I think 2001 was my first year in quarter midgets. Um, and, uh, never, never had a year off since. So when you jumped into quarter midgets all those years ago, what was the modified race car always kind of the, the goal? Yeah, I can remember uh, probably just before I got into the legend cars, I was I was planning my whole future in my head. You know, I was thinking oh, I'm going to start start in a mini stock and then go to a strictly stock and work, you know, all the way through the ranks. And it didn't work out that way. But that's that's all right with me. I was going to say, is it better off that didn't work out that way? Yeah, I mean, I guess you learn you learn the equipment that you're in faster if you just jump into it. Um, so, I mean, there was, there was no SK light or anything like that. We just went straight SK after the legend cars and, and the legend car was a really, really good learning experience. Uh, just the wheelbase and the basically street tires that they were running, they, they were on the edge all the time. So that got me some good car control before I hopped into a modified. Let's talk about uh, your your time at the bowl. Um, we talk about the bowl being, you know, your your family track, a long tradition there. Uh, do you remember your first night in competition at at the same facility that you know your your family has had so much success at? Yeah, the first race there, I did a uh, a young lions race um, in two thousand seven. The end of two thousand seven, I think it was like late October or maybe November, even it was very cold. Uh, 
there was only a couple of legend cars there, but that was my first actual race. I think I finished second and it was, it was fun. It was uh, definitely something I'll always remember. How many years have you been in a modified now? You picked up your, your fifth career win just a couple of weeks ago on one of the first events of the uh, 2021 season at the Speed Bowl. Uh, what year is this for you in a modified and how do you feel you've adapted to these cars over the last couple of seasons? Um, this is, let's see, I started in, uh, 2009, I think. Yeah. 2009 was my first 12 years. Yep. I'm, I'm a veteran now. (laughs) Um, yeah, I've, I mean, I I learn, I learn everything, every, uh, every time I'm on the track, there's something always to be gained. And over the last few seasons, I've learned a lot about setups and, uh, and balance and stuff like that. And that I think has um, really shown in, in our uh, results. Just, I understand the cars a lot better and, and what changes do what on the track. We've talked a lot about Waterford. Um, How often do you venture outside of the speed bowl? Obviously modified racing, the predominant car up here in the Northeast and a lot of tracks run them on a weekly or, or monthly basis in Thompson's case. How, how much do you venture out? Um, well, we ran uh, one basically full season at Stafford in 2012. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I wrecked really hard at the end of the year. That's pretty much what cut that short. Uh, but Thompson, we did run for points. Um, a couple years ago, probably, I think 2018, I want to say. And I mean, I think the season was seven or 10 races, which I liked. That was, uh, it was a nice break. Get to do something else on Saturdays and you know, have a weekend to yourself every once in a while. Um, I like going other places, uh, but the, the speed bull is always home. It's, there's nothing like, uh, the drive there, it only takes about 15 minutes from the shop. So can't really beat that. Absolutely. Uh, no question about that. Let's talk about your uh, early part of the 2021 season. Uh, a second last Saturday night in one of the first big events of the season. A win a couple of weeks before that. Uh, what's kind of been the, the early season secret here these this opening month or so? Yeah, I, I mean, we tried uh, we tried something new with setups right from the beginning of the season we did some practices before the season started and uh and kind of found something um we're still tweaking on it but um it's proven to be something fairly consistent and i think that's what's given me some really good results uh i kind of know what i'm going to have at the end of the race every week and i i adjust for that so um i mean that's uh, four podiums in a row. Um, it's a really great season start. I, I think probably the best I've ever had. Last year, we were right around the same. Um, but this year, I, there's a lot more confidence there. And I say confidence is half of, half of the battle when you're out there on the racetrack. Let's talk about the next generation, because there's a fourth generation of Gata hitting the racetrack, started – what, middle to late last year and are uh, running a full season here in, in 2021. Yeah, she uh, she turned five in August of last year. I was year, talking so. about your daughter, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, Olivia, she yeah. she got maybe, I don't know, six or seven races across Pomfret and Stafford last year. And the improvement from the first time she hit the track in just those those short races, that short season that she had was, was crazy. And then uh, take the winter off and come back. And it's like, she never even stopped. It was, it was uh, really cool. I think she gained a bunch of confidence over, over the winter. Um, she, she learned how to ride her bike. And I don't know if that's the confidence booster she needed, but I think uh, she's pedaled to the metal now and she's not looking back. I, she keeps beating me on the weekends. I, I can't ever, uh, get the high score of the weekend. <laughs> well, we should mention these are Tiger Cub caged go-karts that compete at Stafford on Monday nights and at the Pomfret Speedway up here in Pomfret, Connecticut on uh, select Sunday. 
afternoons and uh, continuing to improve. A couple checkered flags already this year, I believe. Yeah, she's doing really good. She got her first win at Stafford uh, yesterday, and, yep. and we were all ecstatic for that. That's that's Stafford's the one that makes her nervous. I don't know if it's just because it's bumpy or something like that, but um, – she uh, showed up yesterday and she was ready to roll and she proved it. Yeah, rolled uh, right to, to victory lane on uh, Monday night. Joey, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. And best of luck to you the rest of the season uh, as the current point leader at the new London Waterford Speed Bowl. Thanks. Third generation driver Joey Gata joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, part of our Wheeland Engineering Modified Driver Spotlight. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Whelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 19. 19- Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. What seems like a busy time for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour has ended them at Oswego this past weekend. Of course, Doug Kobe, busy man with the SRX series at Stafford Motor Speedway. So, of course, Dowling was the entry there. But it would be Matt Hirschman who crossed the checkered flag, first collecting that victory over Ryan Priest and Patrick Emerling. Also, the ARCA East Series is on race number five of the season for them. Sammy Smith collected yet another victory that he gets to add to the resume over Joey Aist, Rajah Karuth, Parker Retzlaff, and Justin S. Carroll. Also, of course, with uh, local racing continuing to ramp up, a lot of races, a lot of racetracks hitting mid-season, the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts weekly points, again, have been updated for Division I. Peyton Sellers currently sits atop of that point standing with 444 points. Now, now let's hear this out. He's got 18 starts, 444 points. Jacob Gady is currently in second with 14 starts and has 228 points to his. So right now, Peyton Sellers halfway through the season looking almost untouchable at the moment. Matthew Kimball currently sits in that third spot in Division I standings, Kyle. But it's still early, and that can change in a couple of weeks' time because you can only be that strong for so long. Uh, Riverhead Raceway, John Baker claimed the modified race win, his first in September 2017 this past weekend in conjunction uh, with the tour, of course, coming up there this weekend. Bowman Gray Stadium, modifieds did a double dip. Tim Brown and John Holloman split the victories there. They're back in action this week for the Kevin Powell Motorsports 200. South Boston Speedway ran twin 75 lappers for the late models. Stuart Cruz picked up race one and Mike Looney in race number two. Alaska Raceway Park finally getting their season up and rolling up there in Alaska. And it was David Elliott claiming the late model win. And at Seekonk Speedway, David Darling won yet again in the Pro Stocks, his fifth of the year in the first six races. Joe Kohler won in the Sportsman at Seekonk Speedway in Massachusetts. And one more thing with Modified Tour, uh, for the first time in a long time, I have it here somewhere, since 2006, five winners in five races to start the season with Matt Hirschman's win this past weekend at Oswego. So pretty cool stat. Um, I like those type of streaks. They're, they're fun to watch. And maybe we can do six for six this week with maybe Ryan Priest winning at Riverhead. We'll see. Yeah, again, I love you, Justin Bonsignor, but it's really nice to not see Justin Bonsignor and Doug Kobe really just checking out here from the points battle. I mean, like you said, we're about halfway through the season and it's anyone's game. We're seeing new winners. And when you see new winners, even the folks that maybe haven't gotten that win yet, it is that little splash of hope and that drive to continue through the season. So uh, if you haven't been following the tour yet, 
Now is your chance. It's just heating up as we continue this season. Temperatures are supposed to be hot all the way across the northeast and the southeast this weekend. So if you're going to get out and support your local short tracks, stay hydrated, stay cool. Best of luck to all of the drivers. And thank you so much to Amber Schlegel for coming on NASCAR Coast to Coast to hang out with us. We'll see you guys next week here on the Motor Racing Network. I'm Hannah Newhouse for Kyle Ricky and producers Craig Moore and Alexa Henry. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week on the Motor Racing Network.